hello guys you welcome to another tutorial on sew with abby channel in today's video i'll be sharing how to cut and sew this high waist palazzo pants with crop top if this is what you like to see then keep watching let's get into the video i have three yards of african print fabric to achieve this style and i'll be cutting the palazzo pants before the top so the first thing I'll do is to fold my fabric into two to cut the front piece of the palazzo pants. I used my hip measurement divided by 4 plus extra 6 inches to fold this out. I'll draw a line here which is the starting line and from there I'll take the vertical measurement. This pants will have a band of 1.5 inches so I'll take out that 1.5 inches before taking each of the vertical measurements and the first is the hip line. To get the hip line, I will divide my round hip by 4. My round hip is 40 inches, divided by 4 is 10 inches. Next is the crotch depth. To get the crotch depth, I'll simply add 1 inch to the hip line, making it 11 inches. Then, I will also add half inch as ease allowance. This will make the pants not to be tight at the crotch area. You can decide to use 0.75 or 1 inch as your ease allowance, okay? Now from the crotch line, I'll come down by 2.5 inches. This is where I'll measure my round tie. Again, this is the waistline, the hip line, the crotch depth and the tie line. The next thing to do is to take the round measurement. So on the hip line, I'll measure my round hip divided by 4, which is 10 inches, plus 1 inch for stitching allowance, making it 11 inches. I'll mark the same thing on the crotch line as well as the waist line, then connect the points together. Next thing to do is to get the crotch extension. What my round hip divided by 4 gave me was 10 inches. So I'll divide that 10 inches again by 4. 10 divided by 4 is 2.5 inches. I'll mark that 2.5 inches here. Then from that mark, I'll create a curve towards the hip line, like so. At the waistline, I'll measure my round waist divided by 4. Note the direction of my hand. Now my round waist divided by 4 is 7 inches. Then I'll add extra 1 inch for that and another 1 inch for stitching allowance, making it 9 inches. Then I'll connect the points to the hip line. Now on the crotch line, I'll mark the center, then extend that mark to the tie line. The next thing to do is to take my round tie measurement. Now, this tie measurement is unlike the hip and waist to be divided by 2, not 4. So, my round tie is 25 inches plus 1 inch stitching allowance, making it 26. Now, I'll divide that 26 into 2, that is 13 inches. Then, I'll measure half of that 13 inches on either side of the center line. I will come back to the waistline to measure the length of this pants. Still taking out the 1.5 inches for the band, I'll measure 44 inches as the length and add extra 2 inches for M allowance. Then I'll draw a straight line across. So guys, the same thing I have here is what I'll measure at the M. I'll connect the point with a straight line. The last thing to do to this front piece is to come down at the waistline by 1 inch, but then I'm going to cut this out first.
Now at this side of the waistline, I'll come down by 1 inch. Then draw a slant line back to the waistline. Afterwards, I'll cut it out. And this is all for the drafting of the front piece. I'll go ahead now to place this on another folded piece of the fabric to cut out the back. Alright guys, I added extra inches to the sides as well as the top part. And the first thing I'm going to do here is to extend the crotch line by 2 inches. Then I'll come to the waistline and mark where the front piece stop on the back piece. Now from that mark, I'll go in by 1 inch. The next thing to do is to extend the back waistline by 1.5 inches and that is exactly what I have there. Again, I went in by 1 inch and then I extended the waistline by 1.5 inches. Now I want to measure the back waistline. What I have at the front waistline is 9 inches and that's exactly what will be at the back. So from the waist extension, I will slant my tape towards the waistline and measure that 9 inches. For the back crotch, I'll connect the 2 inches crotch extension to the 1 inch I went in by. And after that, I'll measure the length of the zipper. The zipper will be at the back and the length is 10 inches while the width is 1 inch. And I will measure the 1 inch all the way to the 10 inches mark. And this is what your bag zipper allowance should look like. The last thing to do is to add the side allowance. Now the 2 inches I added for the crotch extension is the allowance for this side. So I'll measure that 2 inches all the way to the M. And for this other side, the allowance is 1 inch. And this is all for the drafting of the back pattern. I'll go ahead to cut on the lines. Now that I'm done cutting the pants, the next thing to do is to cut the top. I already folded my fabric into four. This is the front piece and this is the back piece. The top won't be having a zipper, but if you want zipper added to yours, go ahead and add extra inches to the back for zipper allowance. And the amount of fabric I folded is my bust measurement divided by four plus extra 7 inches because I'll be cutting the sleeve together with the top. Now the first measurement I'll take here is the neck. The width is 4 inches and the neck is 4 inches as well. The back neckline will be cut out the same way as the front in order to make it easy to wear since there's no zipper. Now the next measurement I'll take is my shoulder measurement divided by 2. And from that point, I'll determine how long I want the sleeve to be. I want the sleeve long by 6 inches, then I'll add extra 1 inch for stitching. And from that point, I'll come down by 1 inch for the shoulder slope. The next measurement I want to take is the sleeve opening. From the shoulder slope, I'll come down by 6 inches. But I'll advise you add extra inches, especially if you don't want yours two fitted then I'll connect the points together next I'll take my bust point measurement which is 9.5 inches 
Then I'll draw a straight line across. And on that line, I'll take my round bust measurement divided by 4. Plus 1 inch as ease allowance because the top is meant to be free. And another 1 inch as stitching allowance. And from that point, I'll create a curve towards the sleeve. Now, the same measurement I have here for my bust is what I'll use at the aim as well. Then I'll connect the point towards the bust line. I will be using half inch measurement to shape this top a little. And this is all for the drafting of this top. I'll go ahead now to cut it out. Now that I'm done cutting, the next thing to do is to start stitching and I'll be stitching the pants first. I will head over to the sewing machine now to stitch the crotch area like so and I'll be using half inch measurement to stitch it. For the back, when I get to the zipper allowance, I will back stitch and run a loose stitch to the top because I will still open up the seam when I want to attach my zipper. Alright guys, I'm done stitching the crotch area and the next thing I want to do is to hold that and I'll be marking where I want the dart to be. I will place my tape after the seam and mark my bust pan measurement. Your bust pan is your nipple to nipple measurement, okay? My bust pan measurement divided by 2 is 3.5 and then I'll measure the length of my dart which is 5 inches then I'll draw a straight line. Afterwards, I'll mark the width of the dart which is 1 inch half inch on either side of the line. Then I'll connect the points together. And this is how I will be stitching the dart. I'll bring in the back panel in order to mark where the dart will be as well. I will extend the center line and give it a notch. Then head over to the sewing machine to stitch. After stitching the dart, this is what it looks like. And the next thing I want to do is to close the sides. So I'll place the front and back pieces on each other, right side facing. Head over to the sewing machine to stitch. And this is how I'm going to be stitching it with half inch measurement. I'm done closing up the two sides of the pants. And the next thing I want to do is to M the down part. I'll head over to the sewing machine now to M this part. I'll fold it in twice and then I'll run a stitch on it and I'll do the same to the second M as well. After stitching the M, this is what it looks like. The next thing I want to do is to close up this second side and this is how I'll be stitching it from one end to the other end. Alright guys, after stitching up this side, this is what it looks like. The next thing I want to do is to work on the waistline. I want to attach the band, but first I'll need to measure around my waistline to know how long my band is going to be. This is the piece I'll be using as my band. It is 4 inches wide and 2 inches on fold. When I'm done stitching, it will be 1.5 inches just like I want it. And I've gonna add to iron interfacing to it. And I also fold in one part of the aim. For the length, it's long enough to go around the waist of my pants. I will attach it to the waist and this is how I'm going to do it. And when I get to the sewing machine, I'll stitch it all around using half inch measurements, then cut off the excess. 
all right guys i'm done stitching my band and this is what it looks like the next thing to do is to use the other side of the band to cover up the stitch after covering up the stitch i will top stitch on the band all round and after doing that the last thing i'll do is fix the zipper all right guys this is the final look of our palazzo pants i will set it aside now to work on the top the first thing i'll do here is work on the neckline i'll use facing to turn it in you can also make use of bias and these are the pieces I'll be using for the facing. I'll place my top on it like so and trace out the neckline. Afterwards, I'll determine the length I want it to have, then iron interfacing to it. Alright guys, the next thing to do is to attach it to the neckline of my top. And this is how I'll place it on it. I will head over to the sewing machine now to stitch and when I'm done stitching the neckline, I'll fold in this edge once and run a stitch on it to give it a neat finishing. After I was done attaching the facing to the neckline, I turned it in and this is how it looks. I also turned in the edge just like I said. The next thing to do is to join the shoulder and this is how I will do it. After placing my fabric on each other, I will open up the facing then turn it backward like so. Head over to the sewing machine to stitch it down and I'll be doing the same thing to the other shoulder. After joining the shoulder, the next thing to do is to fold in the hem of the sleeve and I'll be using 1 inch to do that. And this is how I'll do it. I'll fold it in twice, then run a stitch on it and I'll do the same to the other sleeve. Alright guys, the next thing to do is to close the side. So I have a gator line here that will serve as the center. I will measure my round bust plus the ease allowance and measure half of it on either sides of this line. And this is how I will be stitching it. The last thing to do here is to measure the length and fold in the down part. The length I want it to be is 18 inches. I will fold in the remaining fabric and use hemming gum to hold it down. So guys, this is the final look of the top. You can see that it is very easy and simple to make. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find this tutorial helpful. If you are yet to subscribe to this channel, kindly subscribe and do not forget to give this video a thumbs up. Bye, see you in my next one.